the humorous thing is that I'm trying to record more each day to get not just one or two done, but to get, you know, or I should say one set or two sets done, but to really get enough ahead that I can begin to do all the other work that I'm supposed to be doing, like the new services and the prophecy services and some of the other networks that I'm in charge of because they seem to be on the decline, but then summer is always like that. There's so many things to do that sometimes some things get put on the back burners. And I could never imagine giving up this time, you know, but I am fascinated to try to add extra time in order to take one day off a week. <laughs> I can't imagine that. I don't think I'm going to make it. I think that I would go nuts. I'll probably wind up writing or doing some other crazy thing that I do. But praise the Lord. He knows. And when you're a born-again Christian and you walk with God and you share with Him your feelings and He shared with you His, you know, you just don't really care. You just go about your day and enjoy it for what it is. You know, the ups, the downs, the turnarounds. <laughs> the hilarity of how in technology nowadays we try to do so much and I'm sure that Jesus is looking down and thinking oh my god those people just need they just need to learn how to be still but in emotional daily life the disciple is not above his master you call me master and lord and you say well for so I am it is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will also keep yours also. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be worried and faint in your mind, and wearied. You have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For as much as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, Arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. <laughs> I don't have a thought in the world about it. It's like, yeah, Lord, cool. <laughs> a lot of my, a lot of my studies are like that. Well, that was cool. You know, okay, let's go on and go. What about this? You know, I just kind of go, okay, that was cool. My son, give me thine heart. Oh, that there were such a heart in them, that they would fear me and keep all my commandments, always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Thy heart is not right in the sight of God, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. They first gave their own selves to the Lord. In every work that Hezekiah began to seek his God, he did it with all his heart and prospered. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. Yeah! <laughs> I mean, what else can you say to something like that? Okay. <laughs> do it heartily. Okay, yeah, cool. <laughs> Let's go for it. <laughs> As the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. You know, sometimes when you're doing a ministry like I'm doing, you don't have to worry about men. <laughs> you just got to kind of like beat yourself you know, up a little bit with reminding yourselves those things that you ought to be doing when you have so much ability to do what you choose which makes it twice as hard because then the Lord seems to be twice as obvious and causes you to do twice as much as what you would normally do if you had some man that you were just trying to do it for. Like I told my wife, work is easy. I said, ministry is tough. <laughs> I said, man, I love going to work. You know what to do. You get the job done. You go home. It's over with. 
Yeah, but ministry, that's a whole different story. I said that you know what to do, but it always stretches you. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. You know, and that's always going to be a perspective that God will do with you. It's that he's always going to increase or as it says in King James, enlarge your heart, meaning your capacity to love, to care, to be merciful, to be kind, to be considerate, to be gentle, to be tender-hearted, to be motivated by those things that aren't normally seen in the world, but are those graces that are given by God. For instance, in the world, there are very few that I know that would be merciful to their enemies or gracious to them or kind, and yet a Christian can even forgive his enemies because Christ has forgiven us who were once at enmity with him. So God is the only one who can do that in us, and as he enlarges our heart, we are filled with his spirit in order to be able to do that. And then our capacity to love, as he fills us with his love, extends outward to others in the same manner. Kind of like, you know, you just let it go and let it flow and it'll get done. <laughs> Don't you know? <laughs> we had a lot of cliches in the Jesus movement. It just seemed to be an easier way to walk <laughs> and talk and be and grow and flow and know and do and live and seek and find and grow. <laughs>